You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a life coach, Nancy can teach you how to stay strong under pressure and work through challenges you face. Being legally blind, Nancy inspires others to be resilient in overcoming obstacles and live full out. You can ask Nancy for advice in your life on relationships, finance, business, health, and more. Just call in at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. Now, here's Nancy. Hello, and thank you for joining us. My name is Nancy Soleri, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we're talking about being courageous in our life. And How do we do that when we're facing fear or we're challenged? And we're going to make sure that you have the motivation to take that next step. Also, we're going to be joined by our inspirational guest in our next segment, Roseanne Stora, who's going to talk about being injured in the Boston bombings that occurred way back in 2013. But yet she's still having to work with prosthetics and other challenges to get through her daily life. So she's going to talk to us about that. Also, if you would like to hear today's show again, go to livingfullout.com. All of our episodes are waiting there for you. Or if you have Alexa, you can listen to us on that device or go to your app stores and you can check us out there. Just look for Living Full Out Radio Show. Also, if you need any resources on today's topic, reach out to us at connect at livingfullout.com. We want to make sure that you're supported. And lastly, if you have an inspirational story that you think our community would benefit from in terms of being inspired, we would really enjoy hearing your story. Just reach out to us at connect at livingfullout.com and perhaps we can have you on as a guest. So I am getting word from our producer that we actually have a caller on the line. We're going to go say hello to them. Hi, welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Hi. Hi, thank you for calling in. How can I help you today? Um, so... An ex-boyfriend of mine has recently gotten a new girlfriend, and I've just been really jealous and kind of negative. And so I just want to know kind of what techniques or ways I can kind of be less jealous or use that jealousy in a better way, because as of now, I'm just starting to get really resentful of both her and him. Well, good question for you. Are you and him still friends? Pretty much. Pretty much. Okay. And and, yeah. and was she in your was she in the friend circle at one time too, or she new to the group? She was in the friend circle at one time as well. She was. Okay. So truly you're actually quote quote friends with both of them. But now they're mm-hmm. together instead of you and him being together. Okay. Yeah. So so here's the best thing you want to do is I want you to consider looking at yourself outside of your own body, okay? Mm -hmm. Almost like you're watching a movie. And if you can picture um, a scenario where you and both of them are in the room together, you want to Mm -hmm. visualize how you look now with this jealousy, this envy, this yucky feeling. Like you're watching a movie, you want to look at yourself with that kind of heavy feeling that you have, right? Right. Mm-hmm. And if you were yeah. watching this movie, you would say, girl, shake it off. You're better. You know, you can do better, right? Mm-hmm. Sometimes we have to look outside of ourselves to see what changes we need to make. The other thing is, who's to say that they're really going to run off into the sunset together, right? I mean, their yeah. bumps in the road have just started. I mean, we wish them well. Maybe not you right now, but, you know, in mm-hmm. life we wish our friends well. But mm-hmm. there's so much more to come for them that you don't, you're almost worrying and almost jealous of things that don't exist yet. Because that happily mm-hmm. ever after that we think they might have hasn't happened. And it may not happen. They might date a month. They might date six months. But then they might stop dating. And then what mm-hmm. you've done is you've wasted all this time festering, worrying about them. So let's go back to that movie where you're watching them and you in a room together. You want to look at yourself and say, girl, you got so many great qualities. And maybe you go and you give yourself a great new hairdo. Maybe you take yourself shopping. Maybe you you picture yourself smiling, glowing, confident, talking about your career, talking about your passions, your life of the party. But you want to make that energy switch. Do you see that? 
Mm -hmm. So when you go out there and you're in the in in a like in a public place with them again or at a party with them again, I want you mm -hmm. to remember what I'm telling you right now. Maybe take a moment, go into the bathroom, close your eyes, center yourself, get yourself in that place where you're watching this movie. But be that vibrant life that you and I and all your friends know you to be. Don't let their partnership, because again, it could be short term, it could be long term, we don't know. Don't let mm -hmm. that bring down your light. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Outside of that, that's all that you can control because we can't control other people. We can only control mm -hmm. our, our, our own actions and our own thoughts. Mm hmm Okay. But I absolutely okay. appreciate you calling in and I will be thinking about you because we've all been there. I have mm -hmm. been there. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? But honestly, always take the higher road and be that positive light. Okay? Okay. All right. All right. Thank you so much for calling in. Thank you. You got it. I'm glad that she asked that question because it is courageous to be around friends that are dating each other. That's tough. That's a really hard place to be. But I have no doubt that when she taps into what makes her special and unique, when she lets her confidence shine, they're going to be looking at her like, wow, she's really good. She, she doesn't need us at all. <laughs> you know. And the thing is, is honestly, we all have that ability to do that for ourselves. Now, I'm getting word from our producer that we have another caller on the line. We're going to go say hello to them. Hi, welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Hi, how are you? I'm great. How can I help you today? What's going on? Um, I have a question. I'm having a hard mm -hmm. time deciding whether or not to leave my longtime job for an unpaid internship that can benefit me in the future. How can I decide? Mm. Well, it's a tough one, right? Because it's a gamble. But life is a gamble. This job that you like so much, is this one that you could see be long-term, like you could build a career out of it? That's a hard question. <laughs> I bring the hard questions. I'll tell you where I'm going with that. I'll tell you where I'm going with that, and this is something you want to ponder. Okay? If you ever find a company that you really enjoy, their mission, their uh, for the company, they're full of integrity. Everything that that they're about is in alignment with who you are. Then that might be a company that you want to stay with as long as it has growth potential. Okay, but if you admire a company, but you only see it really benefiting you for maybe a year, two, five years, something like that, but you really have your sights set on a different position, maybe a different company. Then you want to look at this internship and think, hmm, does this internship have legs? Is there the potential that I could work at that company? Is there the potential that I could grow my career there? And you want to kind of weigh those out. And the thing is, is while you're weighing that out, you really can't lose. Because you have a job that you really enjoy, and I guarantee you you're learning and growing. Or you could have an internship where you're learning something new. Maybe there's guarantees, maybe there's not. But unfortunately, only you know what would fire you up. So if I just ask you really quickly, if you had to make a 20-second decision and choose one, what would it be? The internship. Okay. That was pretty pretty decisive. And why did you choose that? Well, it's kind of like what you said, you know, like, where do I see myself in the future? Like, do I see myself staying in the company I am or, you know, take a gamble, go on the internship and, you know, get the experience and maybe I get hired or take my experience somewhere else, you know, like from what I learned from my internship. So here's the thing. The great news is you've made your, your decision. Internship. Checkbox. Okay? And now the other thing I want you to do is just watch the words that you say to yourself because we want to be more intentional in life. So um, when you were saying all that back to me, you said a lot of maybes, like maybe there's growth potential, maybe they'll hire me. And I want you to start that internship with kind of the as-if factor, right? They're going to hire me. I'm going to grow within this company. You're so great. You're going to do so good at your internship that they, they're going to want you. Do you see that? Yes. Yeah. 
So that will take all the risk out of it. And if you give 110% and the internship still is not your forever home, then at least you know you gave it all, your all, and you took a risk. And that's what life is all about, just playing big. Okay? Okay. But thank you for calling in. And I'm so glad he asked that question, right? Because it's courageous to leave one job and jump into an internship that you don't know how it's going to go. But I have a hunch that he's going to do really, really well. So throughout the show, think about where in your life you want to up the ante, where you want to live bigger, live full out in life. We're going to be coming right back with our inspirational guest, Roseanne Sedora. So stay with us. We'll be right back after this break. Dad, this is fun. I didn't think I liked kayaking. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. But I think it's time to head back in. Okay. Can we come back? Sure. Tomorrow? <laughs> Let's check with Mom. Hey, be careful getting out of the boat. It's a kayak, Dad. <laughs> I'm going to return the kayak. Let's make sure you have everything. Yep. Can we walk home? How about a taxi? 233 North Maple, please. It's a short fare from your neighborhood to your naturehood. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a neighborhood park or green space near you. Also, find fun activities to do like boating and biking or camping and hiking. Plus, much more. It's all right in your naturehood. Best day ever. A public service announcement brought to you by the Ad Council and the U.S. Forest Service. Don't you wish that getting your child to eat right, move more, and spend less time in front of a screen could be as easy as pushing a button? It might not be that simple, but you do have more power than you know. And you can maximize that power with proven strategies, tips, and tools from the National Institutes of Health's We Can, or Ways to Enhance Children's Activity and Nutrition program. We Can offers all kinds of resources, including fun recipes and activities the family can do together to show you the way to live a healthier lifestyle. We're not saying it's easy. We are saying that it can be done. Take the first step today. Call 1-866-359-3226 for a free We Can Parents Handbook. And be sure to visit the We Can website at wecan.nhlbi.nih.gov for free information, too. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Today, my new dad and I shot off a rocket in the park. Today, my new son and I failed to shoot off a rocket. He knew exactly what to do. Not wor- I had no clue what I was doing. We set up the rocket. We set up the rocket. Hit ignition. Hit ignition. And then? And then nothing. (laughs) Sometimes I laugh when I'm frustrated. Then out of nowhere, the rocket launched into the air. The rocket did get into the air. I've never seen anything fly so high. And then crashed into a kite. Look out! Look out! And then the pond. I'll never forget that day. I'll never forget that day, even if I tried. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt U.S. Kids, and the Ad Council. When I was little, I didn't talk for a long time. I liked things to always be the same. Anything new or different would scare and upset me. I was very sensitive to lights and sounds. It was almost like I had bigger eyes and ears than everyone else. So I built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. I didn't like looking people in the eye. It made me feel uncomfortable. I'd throw big tantrums over little things like when my socks didn't match. Sometimes I'd do the same things over and over until one day, I found out I had autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I learned how to live with it better. You can see signs of autism in children as young as 18 months. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org signs. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. 
You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Solari. With Nancy's expertise, you'll learn how to embrace your potential and strive for success. If you have a question or need further support, send us an email at connect at livingfullout.com. Now, here's Nancy. Hello and welcome for joining us today. I'm Nancy Solari and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we're talking about having courage in life to get really over those moments where we're challenged or tested. And our inspirational guest today, boy, was she tested. Back when the Boston Marathon occurred, she was one of the injured. And the thing is, she didn't give up. Roseanne Sedora went, really went for life in a big way. And I want her to share her journey with us today because she is such a great example of what it means to be courageous in life and to not give up. So I'd like to welcome Roseanne to the show. Thank you, Nancy. Absolutely happy to have you. And really, you are in kind of this elite group that have been injured due to a, a bombing. And we hear about these in the news, but to actually having lived it and gone through all the rehab and come out on the other end so positive with such a great outlook that I, I just really applaud you. And that's why I wanted to have you on the show today. But can you take our audience back to, you know, 2013, April 15th? What led you to where you were at the at the place where the bombing had occurred? So uh, every year in Massachusetts and New England, we celebrate uh, Marathon Monday, also known as Patriots Day. Uh, it's the third Monday in April every year, and it marks the anniversary of the American Revolutionary War that started you know, here in, in Massachusetts, really just outside of Boston. So um, on Patriots Day, it, we also have in what we call it is Marathon Monday, and it's the Boston Marathon that Monday. So for many, like multiple, many, many years, even starting as a child, we would go in and go to the Red Sox in the morning, and then as we made our way after the game towards Kenmore Square, which is just outside of the ballpark, you would see the runners starting to come into the city and it would be like the regular runners. And, um, you know, some years I would have friends who ran it and then some years I wouldn't, but I would still go in there every year. And in 2013, in particularly, I had two friends that were running, uh, that, that day. And, uh, we had just gotten a notification that our friend Jen was just about going to be coming down Boylston street to where we were. Uh, and she knew where to look for us. So we wanted to get out there to make sure that we saw her uh, come by and kind of give her a little more inspiration to get to that last, um, get to the to the finish line for that last half mile. And so when you were waiting there, cheering, excited, I imagine the environment was just like it had been for all the other years. Now you decided Absolutely. to get closer. You decided to kind of huddle up to a mailbox, but you were on one side and all your other friends were on the other. And what Correct. do you remember about hearing the bomb, the first bomb go off? It, it, it was, a, it's like 10 to 12 seconds between the first and the second. And it's just really amazing how quickly your brain works, but also how long 10 to 12 seconds can seem. And in those moments, you know, the crowd went completely silent. You could hear a pin drop, which is, you know, it never happened at the marathon. And um, I was just thinking, why would they have celebratory cannons? You know, all the elite runners came in hours before and, um, uh, you know, they've never had celebratory cannons before. So it was kind of weird to have that happen. And, and then, I don't know, within those 10 to 12 seconds, I was like, I'm going to run. Hmm. And as you were running, you saw a flash of light. Under your feet. Yeah. And can you share with us what you now know happened at that moment? Uh, sure. So my friends who were on the other side of the mailbox, they were kind of, we were kind of separated. I separated myself because I'm short and I couldn't see over the mailbox. So I didn't even say bye to them. Basically, I just decided I was going to turn to my right and run. And I saw the flash of white light at my feet and really everything kind of went blank. Uh, I did feel myself kind of thrown into somebody or something and, and blacked out for a, probably just a moment. And then I came to sitting on the sidewalk, knowing that it was not a good situation at all. When you came to, were you alert or were you st in, in shock? And were you able to assess your injuries? 
I was alert. Uh, I was scared. And yes, I sort of assessed my injuries. I was lucky that I never saw my right leg, the one that was amputated, but I could see, you know, where blood was coming from and that it was really not good and that I needed to get help pretty quickly. Otherwise, I thought to myself that I was going to die right there. So um, I kind of reached up for help and and someone kind of came out of the the cloud of smoke, really. Wow. And... And it took a bit for you to, to get that help, and you you didn't get to the hospital by ambulance. How did you get there? <laughs> um, no, I, you know, I could hear them coming and going, and unfortunately, they were all full. So basically, one of the local police officers who was kind of standing near me, he drove one of the police prisoner transport vehicles and basically pulled that up, and I was loaded into the back of that. I'd already been put on a place on a backboard by the fire department and they'd straighten down my right leg as much as they could put it in an ear cast. And, and then uh, they loaded me into the back of that transport vehicle. And, and that's how I ended up getting my ride to the hospital. Well, prisoner transport vehicle checkbox, you've done it, yeah. <laughs> so, but not, <laughs> not in the way, not, yeah, I I'm sorry. What were you saying? Only time, uh, that's the first and only time I've ever been in one. Um, there you go. There you go. <laughs> now, now, um, when you got to the hospital, and we have a few minutes here before we go to break, but um, did did you go back into shock? Did they did they need to put you into a coma? Or were you alert for everything that occurred at the hospital? As soon as those doors opened up to the truck, I basically let myself go and figured, you know, I'd done everything I could, and then the people helping me did everything they could. And at that point, it would really be up to the doctors and nurses to keep me alive. So I let myself go, and they did put me into an induced coma, um, which I was in until Tuesday evening, just to make sure that, you know, everything was going to be okay. They really weren't sure if I was going to live or not. Wow. And that's a scary decision to decide to let yourself go or fight, because, you know, we don't know if when we really let ourselves go, we could pass away. Were you fearful of that? Yes, very much so. But oddly enough, now that I think about it, like today, um, I I think um, uh, if that were quote unquote to happen again, I think I would be okay. At that moment, yes, I was very fearful of it, uh, you know, because I really didn't know what was going on, what happened. But obviously, I've had time now to process it. And and if that was what happened, then that's what happened. But I'm very fortunate it was not my time. Yeah, well, absolutely. And and again, there's so much more to your story that I want to share. So we're going to be going to a quick commercial break. And then when we come back, uh, we're going to pick up on Roseanne's story and, and kind of the journey that was ahead of her in terms of rehabilitation and so many big decisions that she had to make with regards to her various injuries. So Roseanne, stay with us. And absolutely. everybody listening today, you know, she was courageous in the face of this bombing. But we never know when that moment is going to come where we need to be a leader in helping another person or getting through a hard moment ourselves. So stay with us. This is the Living Full Out Show. I'm Nancy Solari. It's all about being courageous in our life. We'll be right back after this break. Listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. There are many sounds in your day to day life. There are sounds that wake you up, sounds that make you smile, sounds that energize you. And sounds that help you relax. But there are some sounds that can alert you to danger and can help save lives. Wireless emergency alerts, now on many mobile devices, use a unique sound and vibration to bring you information about severe weather events, amber alerts, or other emergencies in your area. With critical information from local sources you know and trust, you can be in the know, wherever you are. For more information, visit ready.gov slash alerts. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. 
Hello, my name is Jeffrey, but people in this town call me Maniac. They call me that because I'm the fastest runner in town. But just because everyone knows who I am doesn't mean I belong. I don't really belong anywhere. You see, I'm an orphan, and I wander the streets just looking for a place that I can truly call home. My name is Maniac McGee, and I'm all alone. Explore new worlds. Read my story in the novel Maniac McGee by Jerry Spinelli. For other great book ideas, visit your local library or log on to literacy.gov. Brought to you by the Library of Congress and the Ad Council. Look for the bare necessities. The bare necessities of healthy living are easier than you think. You better believe it. And the food pyramid shows you the way. With just the right amount of exercise and the necessary grains, vegetables, fruits, milk, and meats and beans. Just the bare necessities of life. So eat right, be active, and have fun. Yeah, man. For your own path to a healthier you, visit MyPyramid.gov. This is really living. This message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the Ag Council. Hi, my name is Nancy Scaleri, host of the Living Full Out Show. I am excited to let you know that we are now associated with Alexa. If you have Alexa in your house and you didn't know that, go ahead and find Living Full Out because you can hear us anytime you want. And we're there for you to keep you motivated. Go to your app store because we're located there as well. Just look for the Living Full Out radio show. It's important to us that we put out really inspiring programming But we want to make sure that you have it at your fingertips when you need us most. We never know when those challenges are going to come, when we're going to feel lonely and need that motivation. So just know that when you need us, we're here for you. Check out Alexa, the app stores, or go to livingfullout.com. Here's to you living full out. What if I could tell you that a full-blown wildfire was going to occur tomorrow right where you live? Tell you exactly which neighborhoods it would engulf and how fast it would do it. The first thing you would do is talk with your loved ones and make a plan today. It's true. I can't tell you a wildfire will strike tomorrow. But shouldn't you make a plan anyway? Go to ready.gov slash communicate and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait. Communicate. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Driving has a rhythm all its own. Don't wreck it with a text. Before you get behind the wheel, silence your phone. Or better yet, designate a texter. For more text-free driving tips, visit stoptextstoprex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Solari. As a life coach, Nancy can teach you how to stay strong under pressure and work through challenges you face. Being legally blind, Nancy inspires others to be resilient in overcoming obstacles and live full out. You can ask Nancy for advice in your life on relationships, finance, business, health, and more. Just call in at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. Now, here's Nancy. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Nancy Solari, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And we're talking about having courage in life when we need it most. And our inspirational guest today, Roseanne Sedora, was a perfect example of being courageous back in 2013, April 15th, for that Boston Marathon bombings that many of us saw on TV and were just in awe. But she actually lived it and survived it. So we'd like to welcome Roseanne back to the show. Thank you, Nancy. Absolutely. And, you know, I I bring up courage over and over again when it comes to you because through every step of your rehabilitation and all the decisions that you had to make, you had to be courageous. You had to make some pretty tough calls. And when you awoke from your, um, you know, the coma that they put you in, the medically induced coma, who was the first person that told you about your injuries and, and what needed to be decided? Uh, my trauma doctor was the first person who spoke, but at the same time, it was my trauma doctor, my mother, my sister, my father that were there. And mm-hmm. basically, uh, the trauma doctor told me that he had amputated me below the knee and was going to try to keep me below the knee, um, but he would have to go back in and clean it out some more. And that would determine, you know, where the amputation would end. And unfortunately, 
I am above the knee as an amputee. So he had to go in and clean out some of the debris that had gotten in there um, from the bombing. Well, and, and when you're at the hospital, I'm sure it's a little bit of this safe bubble where you know you're looked after and, and you're being treated. But then the day came when you got released and you lived in, in, in a home where you had like 18 stairs. You had to get up to your place. Did that yeah. seem defeating? Were you hopeful? I mean, because that, that was a lot of work ahead of you. Uh, yes. Uh, part of it was fearful, being out in the real world and outside of those four walls that were keeping me safe and with therapists and, you know, all the help at any time of day that I needed. But uh, I really, really wanted to get home. My mom, my dad, even uh, my employment. They were, you know, giving me options of places to go that I wouldn't have 18 stairs to get to my apartment. But I was mm-hmm. determined. I really wanted to go home and be at home. And oddly enough, the day that I did get released from the rehabilitation hospital, I literally went and sat on my couch for 12 hours. I sat from 11 o'clock in the afternoon, in the morning to 11 o'clock at night, just soaking in my home and my couch and, and just being home because it had been a month since the last time I had been there. Wow. And what a great moment just to feel like you're you're free from the hospital, but yet yeah. that comfort feeling from being at home. Um, you know, I am legally blind, and I've had times in my life where I've looked in the mirror and I've said, what do you look like? <laughs> because it's really <laughs> blurry for me. And I imagine that you had a moment where you looked down at your leg and it wasn't there. And what is that moment like? Because I know for me, it's like, where do you even package the sadness? Yeah. I mean, I have those moments even still now where I I wake up in the morning and I look down and go, I don't have a leg. I have to put my leg back on because I don't sleep with my prosthesis. But it's it's one of those things that I, I think I've always been a realist. And I know that it's not going to grow back. But it's still shocking to see that I don't have a leg. So I don't know if it's just that I'm still confused of what happened. I don't know if it's that I just haven't accepted what happened or if this is just how I'll always be where it's still shocking, still new, but yet something that I live with every day and just go about doing what I need to do and, you know, um, just kind of living my life. Honestly, yeah, I get, um, you know, I, I get that mm-hmm. you, you can't go back and change it. All you have is today and tomorrow kind of thing. Right. Um, right. And, 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 wrong, I, and hate it. I, I hate it. I, mm-hmm. <laughs> I hate every moment of it. But what's the alternative? So, you know, I just well, feel. And the thing and the thing that's interesting and hopefully you can kind of educate us here is you've had multiple prosthetics. You've had legs for different occasions, running, walking, biking. And I'm just wondering, does does someone always have those choices to have the ability to have different types of prosthetics? Or did you just line yourself up with a really good uh, crew of people that that had that ability? Or how did that come about? So honestly, Nancy, I, I have a little bit of guilt of it because of the fact that there are so many people that get amputated on a regular basis, daily, as a matter of fact, that don't have or didn't have the opportunities that I've had because it was such a media situation that a lot of different agencies came to our, not just mine, but a lot of um, the survivors' aid. And there are so many different grants out there that people don't always know about or different um, organizations Uh, such as one that's there in California and San Diego, the Challenged Athletes Foundation. They're an amazing, amazing group. And it doesn't even have to be amputation. It can be, it could be blindness. It could be, um, you know, uh, cerebral palsy. It could be different things. But if you have something that you want to try or something that you did prior to your, your situation, they have grants that you can apply for and get you know, special equipment or prosthesis or wheelchairs or crutches or whatever it might be that you're looking for. Um, And their grant season, as a matter of fact, is going on right now. I know it closes soon, but, Mm -hmm. you know, I had different companies, different organizations such as those that really 
kind of sought us out, whereas normally if I was amputated for, you know, just an accident that wasn't so public, I, I don't know if I would know where to look for these. And, and that's one thing that I like to do, Nancy, is really help educate people and, and really let them know of these different organizations. As a matter of fact, one of the other survivors, Heather Abbott, who's an amputee now as well, she started the Heather Abbott Foundation, and she's doing um, similar, but she's, you know, really kind of doing more cosmetic situations because, you you know, insurance doesn't cover all of it yeah. or any of it at some mm-hmm. time. So it's, it's frustrating. Well, it's really good to know that those grants are out there and, and, you know, everybody listening, we encourage you to seek those out or help a friend or somebody who may not know about those opportunities or reach out to Roseanne. But the thing is, is you, you really opened my eyes because, well, I don't take, you know, seeing for granted because I wish I could see better all the time. You know, you don't take a kneecap for granted. And if you could just kind of share with me a little bit about that. Absolutely. So, you know, when I was told at the time that I was going to be an amputee from, uh, you know, my doctor, at that point I was like, I thought to myself, well, what does it matter? I, I don't care. If you keep me below the knee or above the knee. But, you know, living it for the last five years now, clearly there is a huge difference between being below and above. And with being above, I have a knee that is, in my situation, a computer, where a lot of times they're more just a mechanical kind of um, hinge. But if I were below the knee, that would mean that I would have my knee. And it's just at least not that it's not that it makes it 100 percent better, but it also but it gives you a little bit more of uh, the natural knowing of kind of where your foot is going or the natural, you know, placement stairs would be so much easier. Uh, There's like so many different things that would be done differently and with a little bit more ease if I had my knee. And honestly, Nancy, I don't care about the rest of it. I just kind of wish I had that knee joint. But with mm-hmm. today's technology, who knows? Down the road, it could be something that you never know. So I'm not counting it out yet. Well, and you are a fighter. But even a fighter can get concerned and scared from time to time because it has been five years. And the question kind of looming for you is how long will your robotic knee last, and then what, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, prosthesis, even below the knee, uh, even below the knee, their prosthetics only, our prosthetics only last three to five years. So Mm. mine's on the five-year mark. So basically, I just kind of wait every day for it to malfunction. And, you know, it's, it's funny because of the type of knee that I have, I do charge my knee every night. And once a year, it goes back to the manufacturer for a tune-up, just like your car does. And I'll get a loaner knee, like a loaner car, and they'll fix it. And I'm just waiting every time that I send it back now to get tuned up. They're just going to be like, yeah, we, you know, you need a new one. And, and wow. then what? You know, I mean, it's just ridiculously expensive. And I, I have money set aside, but... You know, you never want to use it. It's, in my mind, it's my rainy day fund. It's the fund that I will only use for my prosthesis. But even then, I, I don't want to use it because who knows? And I don't want to be one of those people that would have to be in a wheelchair because they can't afford a prosthetic. And there's so many people out there that are like that, that my heart really mm-hmm. goes out to. So um, it's just crazy of lifespan, expensive, and insurance and, and all that. It's, it's, it's just something else to think about and worry about i guess absolutely and and the thing is we only have one minute left before i have to say goodbye to you although i could talk to you for hours <laughs> i guess the last parting thing i want to ask you is and really the audience because you know for you it was this bombing but for somebody else it could be bankruptcy it could be a, a love of a, a you know loss of a loved one but gosh how do you not just be angry and frustrated and sad how, how are you channeling to be positive I look at it as if we have choices in life, and in my mind, I have a choice of being negative and sitting on the couch or being uh, positive or uh, realistic and moving forward. I had a good life before, and I want that same now. So although it's a little bit more of a challenge, I just just try to, you know, forge through it and, and try to make those choices. I mean, some people don't have that choice. I do, and I want to make it the best I can. Yeah, well, and you are. And thank you for opening our eyes to what happened that day and the people that came to your 
to rescue and support you and and just sounds like you had really great care and then you know all the things that you've done with the prosthetics and just navigating all the rehab and and you've done it with grace but you've also done it to educate others and so thank you so much for being on today's show and we'll be wishing you and your knee a lot of you know good <laughs> luck <laughs> not that you need it I but i'm I, I i'm definitely sending positive wishes your way thank you so much thank you nancy i appreciate it thank you so much Okay, thank you. And for everybody listening today, you have the ability to have the same courage that Roseanne had. It's just taking it, harnessing it, applying it to your life in whatever way you need. And that's what this show is here to do. So stay with us. We're going to be taking your calls. I am Nancy Solari. This is the Living Full Out Show. And today it's all about tapping into your courage, letting it really take the lead in your life so you can live full out. Well, Jason, I've got to tell you, you're pretty much everything this company is looking for in an entry-level candidate. Great. Your resume isn't quite what we're used to, but you've got a fantastic work ethic. Thank you. And I'm impressed by how you carry yourself. So, should we talk about the job? Uh, What? The job? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I have no way of recruiting or even meeting you. This interview didn't happen. It may sound ridiculous, and that's because it kind of is. There's a huge pool of talent your company is missing out on. Meet the grads of life. Who are they? Talent worth knowing about. Young adults of unique determination and experience. An ideal fit for your company in an entry-level position, internship, or even mentorship. They might not have every qualification you typically look for, but they're exactly who your company needs. Man, we really could have used him. Don't miss out on a resource many innovative companies have already discovered. Go to gradsoflife.org to learn how to find, cultivate, and train this great pool of untapped talent. Brought to you by the Ad Council and gradsoflife.org. The following message is about Medicaid and CHIP, free or low-cost health coverage for kids and teens. Enrollment is open year-round. Hey, voice lady, give me the mic. Um, okay. Hey, DJ, let's switch up the music. That's better. So listen up, moms and dads out there. There are these programs called Medicaid and CHIP. They offer free or low-cost health coverage for kids. Things like doctor and dentist visits, prescriptions, and shots are covered. All the stuff that keeps kids like me healthy and in charge. So, as you can tell, a covered kid is a confident kid. And it means confident parents, too. To learn more about affordable health coverage for your family, visit healthcare.gov or call 1-877-KIDS-NOW. That's 1-877-543-7669. Yep, you could do something big for your family today because enrollment is open year-round. This has been a message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. And Sophia. They're going to jump out of trees. You can't stop them. They'll go down the slide head first. They'll make parachutes out of sheets. They'll balance on things that are impossible to balance on, like the back of a couch or a windowsill or a scooter seat. They'll run with sharp objects. They'll run into walls. They'll climb things that won't hold their weight. They'll put their fingers in places where they could get smashed. They'll drive their tricycles down steep hills. They'll bounce balls off their faces. They'll step on each other. They'll jump on each other. They'll invent whole new ways to put themselves in jeopardy. But one of the most dangerous things kids will do happens while they're sitting perfectly still. Kids who ride in a car without a booster seat are much more likely to suffer serious or fatal injury during a crash than kids in boosters. But amazingly, 80% of all kids who need them aren't in them. After a toddler seat and until they're four foot nine, boost your kids and don't let them down. Go to BoosterSeat.gov to learn more about the importance of boosters. A message from the U.S. Department of Transportation and the Ad Council. Have you ever lost a cat? And have you ever wanted to get your cat back after you lost it? I'm Andrew Hoffman. I invented the lost cat magnet. Just turn it on and lost cats stick to it. Just listen to one satisfied cat. That's proof. You should invent stuff too. But remember, don't do a lost cat magnet. Anything's possible. Keep thinking. Get started on your own inventions or just play some games at inventnow.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, the National Inventors Hall of Fame Foundation, and the Ad Council. We are your pets, and this song's dedicated to those people who don't have health insurance yet. Enroll, we say, we want you to be okay. Enroll, we say, take care, people, for goodness sake. 
unique. Health insurance is now affordable and covers prescriptions, hospitalizations, and preventive care. Visit GetCoveredAmerica.org to learn more. And take care, people. Brought to you by Get Covered America and the Ad Council. When you need to be courageous in life, always remember to visualize yourself taller, stronger, wiser. Because really, inside you, you have all the courage that you need to move those obstacles to the side, leap over them, go under them, to get around the bend. But the thing is, is living full out is right in front of you. You just have to courageously step forward. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. Nancy is here as a guide to show you how to rise above obstacles and savor each moment. If you have a question, call in live at 800-333-0001. That's 800-333-0001. And now, here's Nancy. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Nancy Soleri, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we've been talking about being courageous in our life and That's not always taking action. Sometimes it's just being emotionally strong and knowing that you can get through a hard time. And so whenever you have a moment where you're unsure, you feel unsteady, lacking confidence, you want to always remember that there are people in your life that you can turn to that can be that crutch when you need to be lifted up, that can hold your hand when you need a steady one. So never forget that you're not alone. And others are there to support you. In fact, here at the Living Full Out Show, we're dedicated every week to making sure that you can courageously step forward and tackle those challenges. Now, I'm getting word from our producer that we do have a caller on the line. We're going to go say hello to them. Hi, welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Hi, Nancy. Hi, thank you for calling Hi. in. How can I help you? Um, so I am, um, I started a program with addiction medicine not too long ago. Um, because I knew I needed a lot of help and I just, I wanted, I wanted to get better and I'm really happy with my decision because it's changing my life in a positive way. Uh, but my, my question for you is how do I stay strong and on the right direction during treatment? And, um, like, how do I really look at myself in the mirror and believe that I'm not going to go back to how my life was before Mm, Those are such great questions. So I really want you to do a lot of visualizing. Okay. It's going to be really important that as you go through this process of recovery, that when you close your eyes at night or even in the middle of the day when you're alone by yourself, that you can close your eyes and you can picture yourself healthy and happy. And when you can picture yourself healthy and happy, you really want to feel it. What are you wearing? What does it smell like? Are you wearing a perfume? Who are you around? And bring that healthy, happy moment really crystal clear to your heart so that it's not a fleeting thought, that it's possible. And when you take right. that, that vision and then you couple that with the support, the therapy that you have right now, now you're able to connect this future you where you want to be in life with where you are now. Mm -hmm. And that will help Mm -hmm. with the confidence side of it. And then the last thing I want to say too is trust your instincts to make decisions. Okay. Trust your instincts to make decisions. If your instincts Mm -hmm. are telling you that you need to make a move, you should not be in an environment that you are now. Trust your Mm -hmm. instincts and make that move. If you know that a, a relationship, a friendship, whatnot, is not serving you and that it could be toxic to that future vision that you have for yourself, right. you want to make that call and let it go. Because no right. one can decide what's good for you but you. Do you see that? Yeah. That's, yeah. that's great. Because sometimes I mm-hmm. think that I'm, um, that I can just indulge one more time because I'm getting better. But then I know that I'll go back to being sad and out of control and like losing everybody. Mm -hmm. And you you want to always remember too. think about and it's okay to take a moment to do this. But but think about Mm -hmm. the most epic 
yucky, upsetting moment that you had when oh, when, no. when you were <laughs> okay. when you were an addict? No, you have to think about it. And yeah. how you felt, how you felt about yourself, the taste of it, the smell of it, the people you hung out with, all of that, you mm-hmm. want to package that away and you want to say, you do not have control over me. You do not have power over me. I'm, you know, I don't know if you want to write it down on paper and then throw it into a mm-hmm. fireplace and burn it. Whatever you want to do, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. You have to release. Maybe, maybe take a balloon and, and, I don't know, put things in the balloon or whisper into the balloon and then let it go up into the sky. Release it, right? <laughs> but you have to let yeah. go of the yuckiness in order to leap forward to that vision that you have for yourself. So the fear of thinking that you might go back is because mm-hmm. you feel that those moments still have power over you. But that's why I'm saying write it down, burn it in a fireplace, release a balloon, yeah. do something yeah, okay. and let it go. I can, okay. I can, I can burn that. Yeah. <laughs> you got, okay. I can burn that. You might actually enjoy it. I'm not saying go out there and burn a lot of things, but you might. So, okay. well, thank you so much for calling in and we'll be thinking of you. We believe in you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for calling in and. For everybody listening today, we all have that ability to be courageous like our last caller. The entire Living Full Out team is dedicated each week to keeping you motivated. We have Rich and Aaron and Camille and Riley and Brianna and Julia. And the list goes on of all the people that just wish you well every week. And most of all, if you want to hear today's show again, go to livingfullout.com. All the episodes are waiting there for you. And Alexa, if you have that, you can hear us there, the app stores, so many places to check out the Living Full Out show. But most of all, I believe in you. Here's to you living your life full out. Thank you for listening to the Living Full Out Show with Nancy Soleri. To learn more about this program, visit livingfullout.com for the latest episodes. Connect with the Living Full Out community by following us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and subscribing to our YouTube channel. If you have an inspirational story you want to share, email us at connect at livingfullout.com. Here's to you, Living Full Out.